Hey, let's read some Kingfisher. I'm on page 312. Please follow along. We're going to talk about sound. Sounds cool. So is light and color, I hope. I, you know, actually, I saw that there was a, a section on color in this book that I didn't assign to you. Let me see where it was. It's on page 272 in Kingfisher about color. I know you learned some, probably a lot, from the video, but if you want to go and read it, because color is just really cool. Um, and light. They're crazy to think about. What? God designed this world so neat. But today let's talk about sound, so flip to page 312. Sound as changes of pressure. Sound consists of vibrations that travel through a medium, such as air or water. These vibrations can be detected by the ears of animals. When people speak, the vocal cords in their throats vibrate back and forth. As they vibrate, they produce sound waves that travel over 1,000 feet per second. These waves are changes in air pressure of around 1 10,000th of normal air pressure. The air does not move with the sound wave. It simply vibrates around an average position. Crazy. So when we speak, the air pressure changes and the vibrations travel through the air. But the air's not moving. What? I guess if the air moved with it, we would feel a breeze, like someone was blowing on us every time we heard something. I don't know. That's kind of what I would think. Sound in air. Sound tr sounds travel through air as a back and forth movement of air molecules. A vibrating surface makes sounds by alternately pushing and pulling at the layer of air surrounding it. This layer of air then pushes and pulls at the layer of air next to it, and so on. This is how vibrations travel through the air. Sound in other media. Sound can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. It cannot travel through a vacuum because there are no particles to vibrate and carry sound waves. When it says vacuum, it doesn't mean like a vacuum cleaner. Um, I used to think that. <laughs> it means like outer space where there's no air, nothing. Um, because when you think about outer space, you think about maybe it having air, but of course it doesn't. So sound can't travel through outer space because there's no air for it to travel through. Okay. Um, this is how the vacuum between the panes of a window provides sound insulation. So I guess they, between panes of a window, there's nothing in there. Uh, I didn't know that. Oh, the sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies have been bad. Okay. A substance that carries sound is called a medium. And the speed of sound depends on the density of the medium. Sound travels five times faster in water than it does in air, for example, and more than three times faster in glass than in water. This is because the particles in a dense medium, such as glass, are closer together than in a less dense medium, such as air. The closeness of particles in a dense medium helps vibrations pass more quickly from one particle to the next. Compressing a gas increases its density, so the speed of sound in a gas increases as the pressure of the gas increases. So. This makes sense, right? Because when we talk about states of matter, um, gas has like, remember like the little particles within a state of matter? And when they're in, like the particles in a gas, they're really spaced out. They're not, they're really far apart. So air, right, is a gas. So those particles are so far apart that when they vibrate, it takes a while for them to hit another particle. But this says it travels faster in water, right? Remember, liquid, they're a little bit closer together. Um, so 
it'll hit a particle faster. And then through glass, glass is a solid, right? So that solids or particles are really packed in tight. So when one vibrates, of course it's going to hit another one faster. Very cool. Okay, using sound. Some animals have ears that detect sound as they travel through air or water. The ears convert vibrations into nerve impulses that travel to the brain. So cool. Other animals, such as snakes, whoa, 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 I don't even want to talk about them, sense ground vibrations. No snakes, please. Animals use sounds to communicate and to gather information about their surroundings. Sounds such as the noises of falling rocks or moving predators can provide warnings of imminent danger. Echolocation. Some animals, such as bats, dolphins, and whales, use sound to navigate and locate food. They send out short bursts of high-frequency sound and analyze the returning echoes. This is called echolocation. It helps these animals detect prey and estimate its speed and direction of motion. Ships use sonar, sound navigation, and ranging to form images of underwater objects and landscapes. A device similar to a loudspeaker emits intense pulses of sound. A computer analyzes the timing and direction of returning echoes to calculate the positions and sizes of objects. Infrared sound. Infrared sound, or er, infrared, consists of sound waves that vibrate at frequencies below around 20 hertz, which is the lower limit of human hearing. Sounds in this range are said to be subsonic. That means we can't hear them. Earthquakes send subsonic waves through the ground. Explosions send them through the air. Although infrared sound cannot be heard, its pressure waves can sometimes be felt. Ultrasound. Ultrasound consists of sound waves that vibrate at frequencies greater than around 20 kilohertz, the upper limit of human hearing for most adults. Ultrasonic waves penetrate liquids and solids better than low frequency sounds. This is why ultrasound is used in some types of sonar equipment and in body scanners that give images of internal organs and growing babies. Ultrasound echoes can also detect flaws inside welded metal objects, such as steel pipeline. The energetic vibrations of ultrasound can be used to break kidney stones into pieces that are small enough to pass out of the kidney and urine. That is incredibly painful, and I pray that none of you ever have kidney stones. I've never had them, but a roommate of mine once had really bad kidney stones, and she said it was the most painful thing. So I pray none of you ever have kidney stones. Water-filled ultrasonic baths are used to dislodge encrusted dirt from laboratory, laboratory equipment. Very cool. So that's a little bit about sound. You'll learn more from the video. I found another Bill Nye video on YouTube about sound. I, I don't know how that's legal for that to be on YouTube, but we're going to run with it because they're really good. And I hope you enjoyed it.